Hey everyone, long time no see, but we are back with another review and this time we will be looking at a prototype Hungarian saber by Landsknechts Emporium. Now as per usual, the general structure of the video is going to be that I will have my say about the saber, the ordering process, stats, things I noticed while using it, things like that. Then there will be a picture with stats so that you can just pause and look at those in detail. And there will also be some other pictures just generally so you can pause and look at those should you want to. And as always there is also going to be some sparring footage so that you can just see the piece in motion. Now there are some caveats um, that I just have to give regarding this review. One being that I bought the Sabre with my own money, but this time I didn't pay full price. I actually got the offer from Landsknecht Emporium to get a discount and provide some feedback on it. And that was done before and independently of this video. The other thing is that, as I said, this is a prototype. So this is rougher finish than you would normally find. Craftsmanship is still there, of course, but this is not how it is gonna end up looking as soon as you can find anything like that in their shops, really. So keep that in mind. And the last thing is that I am not an expert in Polish or Hungarian generally Eastern style kind of saber fencing, really. That's just nothing that I really do. My focus is British military saber fencing, more specifically it is Hutton and Art of Defense, Roworth, which both are styles that focus very much on fencing from the wrist as much as possible, or rather exclusively. Which isn't necessarily the exclusive mode you should probably have for this type. Of saber. Now I'm aware of that, but it is a bit like with languages really. I like to think my English is quite alright, but I can't really hide the fact that my first language was German. And if you know what to listen for, you'll hear that. I am aware that my saber fencing is very much wrist focused. I try to turn that off a bit but you'll see it <laughs> easily so so just keep that in mind when it looks a bit weird and clumsy that's not the saber's fault that's on me really okay with that all the way the actual piece and ordering process as i said i didn't go the traditional way of looking on the website finding the piece and ordering there but rather I was aware that Landsknecht Emporium was working on sabers. They did document that on their Facebook page. And when they provided progress pictures and just, you know, shared their findings and everything, I ever so subtly dropped hints that I was actually quite fond of what I saw. So I was quite happy, <laughs> if not to say delighted when uh, Adam contacted me by Facebook and let me know that three prototypes were actually still available and asked me if I wanted one. So, uh, I mean, how could I not to, really? So I agreed. And I think we talked about it in mid to late April. There was no waiting time, of course. This was already done. So I got the invoice. I paid by PayPal and then had the saber in my hands at the end of the week, which was nice. The piece itself, again, a prototype. So there are just some general blemishes that you wouldn't see in that uh, form on a general finished mainline piece from their shop. But as I said, the craftsmanship is still there. It's very authentic from the proportions, as far as I can say, again, I'm not an expert, but, you know, from the things I've seen, it is 
looking really quite nice. The Alman, of course, is a highlight, as always. So when it comes to stats, the grip is, from the portion that you can actually grip, 10.5 uh, centimeters, so comparatively short. More on that later. The cross is quite wide, as it should be, uh, 23 centimeters, roundabout. The blade overall is 77 ish centimeters. So, good mid length for a saber, for a blade, I would say. Um, the blade, when it comes to just how broad it is, width is 3.6 centimeters down to 3 centimeters and then the arm is 4 centimeters and then it goes to a rounded safe tip at the end of it. Distal taper 6 millimeters at the cross and then it actually goes down to 2 millimeters at the thinnest point, goes back to about 3-ish and then at the arm it's 4 millimeters and then it goes back to 5 millimeters for a thickened rounded tip. It's flexible, a bit stiffer, I would say, than the Dorothea or Antonia, but still flexible enough. The cross, as you can see, is really quite sturdy. It's uh, 15 millimeters, just thick, goes down to 9-ish millimeters and then back to 15. Sturdy in general, I would say, is just the name of the game here. Um, I have sparred with this, of course, and I tried some cross-cutting style fencing with it, which resulted in some blade contact that really felt quite hard in the hand, which didn't really impress the hilt construction at all. So that is nice, really. I was a bit worried about that because, at least to me, just from pictures and everything, the grip looked quite dainty, comparatively, but held up great. That's just solid, like a rock, really. Now, the reason why I said that this saber is probably not ideal for exclusively fencing it from the wrist is that the overall weight is 920 grams which is fine, as far as I'm concerned. But the point of balance for the saber is at about 20-ish, 19-ish centimeters, really. So this saber really has you no know, places to be, things to do. So quite, quite a thing. You need to control this blade. For what it is supposed to be, of course, that's perfectly fine. But it is something that when sparring with a partner or just when getting to know the blade, you just have to take into account, really. And you have to work with that. This isn't a saber where I would say you can do whatever. Taking the most extreme other example I can think of, like a foil, you know, it doesn't matter how you move a foil from point A to point B, really. Uh, it's light enough and the balance is on the cross, if not in the hilt, so that it really doesn't matter. Not the case here, as it shouldn't be. This one you have to work with. And if you do that, though, you're fine. It flows nicely. And again, the Yalman, just the general form of it, is just an absolute highlight. So I really yeah, I'm quite fond of this, <laughs> as you probably noticed. Um, speaking of notice, there are some things I have to say regarding the general usage in a HEMA context. Now, this isn't a reproduction blunt. This is a HEMA blade, as you can see in the profile. I'm not quite sure how well the camera picks it up, but this is made so that the edge can be thicker, uh, while still having a good blade profile, really, which is good. Um, if you do some cross-cutting, you do appreciate a thick edge that is nicer when being hit, and it is just lasting so much longer. So that is great. 
Flexibility, as I said, a bit stiffer than the Antonio or Dorothea, but still perfectly fine. One thing that definitely came up, but again, prototype, we talked about this. This might really not be a thing when you actually have a uh, production piece, is that the blankets here are of course very authentic and they are very nice looking, but they are comparatively thin, again, as they should be. And when I got the saber, they were with the proper distance to the blade so that they could sit outside a scabbard which is generally fine, but wasn't quite ideal for sparring, where things don't always end up going like they should. And that led to, at at least one time, the blade of my partner actually going in between the langet and the blade and bending it outwards. Now, what we did then was just we clamped it down, pressed it closer to the blade, and voila, after that, perfectly fine. Another thing that isn't really a problem for me, but what I could imagine being definitely something worth noticing for some is the length of the grip. Now, I like this grip a lot. I like that you can hook your pinky into the end cap here. Um, it's got a good profile, just in thickness, but also just the general form. This is nice but 10.5 centimeters long. When I don't have a glove, perfectly fine, of course. I have enough room to use this, any kind of grip that I would want to hold this in. Still not a problem when I take something like a light glove, like this motorcycle glove, light to medium, somewhere in between, depending on how you see it. Still fits perfectly fine. Right? My whole hand, I can still hook my pinky behind the pommel cap. This is nice, works well. That is also the glove that I would probably use most of the time, simply for control. Now going from light to medium to medium to heavy-ish, again, depending on your definition, Red Dragons. They also still work. I can still hook my pinky behind the pommel cap. A bit less room for doing so, but you know, I can still feel it, it still works, but less room. This being a cruciform type of hilt though, you might want extra protection for the hand using a heavier type glove and that is where you will probably, with this prototype version at least, run into problems, simply because the plates between the fingers, at least for a five finger infinity glove like this, doesn't really allow. It's just not long enough for that. I can make it work, but it means my finger is on the pommel cap, not behind it, which means less control, really. It's not ideal. Now, if you compare that to the Berbekush saber, which is the saber I paired it against, most of the time, and which it worked great against, you can just see that it's just a bit shorter, really. And that is just the amount that you will notice when you want to use a heavy glove. As I said, fine for me. I mostly use medium to light gloves anyway, but if you want to use the Infinity Gauntlet or any glove that makes your hand about that size, this might be something to take into account. Other than that, I generally have to say I really like this. As I said, prototype, rougher finish, but the craftsmanship is there. It's a wonderful blade. It's just a joy to move it around. I can't really judge it on how well it would fit your style, but what I know of what people do with Polish-Hungarian fencing, this one would, for all I can say, work really well. Generally, it is a saber that, because of the point of balance, has to be controlled and you have to work with it, but when you do so, it is a joy 
to move. And just subjectively speaking, I also think it's really a beautiful piece. So I will be using this for just having fun and just fencing, really. I quite like it. Cheers.